Welcome to Sunday School. This is Sunday School for August 30th, 2020. The topic is Two Kinds of Wisdom. And I do not own the rights to this music. Wisdom is defined as the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. The quality of being wise. The soundness of an action or decision with regard to the application of experience, knowledge, and good judgment. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, and give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. The topic is two kinds of wisdom. Also to note in Proverbs 21 and 30, there is no there is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Knowledge of the holy is understanding. The Bible basis is found in James chapter 3, verses 13 through 18, and James chapter 5 verses 7 through 12. The Bible truth says James compares two kinds of wisdom, wisdom from heaven and wisdom from below, and exhorts believers to choose the wisdom that comes from God. The memory verse says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And that's James chapter three, verse 17. The lesson aim says, by the end of the lesson, we will describe the value of acting with wisdom from above and patience in the midst of trials. Turn from actions that have been done out of earthly wisdom and lack of patience and embrace wisdom from God and seek to demonstrate it. The Bible says to be doers of his word. And also in patience, we possess our souls. I'm going to read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 31. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks holiness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world and things which are despised, have God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord." Now let's look at James chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. 
Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he received the early and latter rain. That is James chapter 5 now. I'm on verses 7 through 12. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Now, the definition of pure means not mixed with any other substance or material. Peaceable means inclined to avoid argument. Gentle means having or showing a mild, kind, or tender temperament or character. Easy is presenting few difficulties. Entreated means to ask earnestly for something. Partiality is favoritism. Unfair bias in favor of one thing or person compared with another. Bias is prejudice in favor of or against one thing, person, or group compared with another, usually in a way considered to be unfair. And hypocrisy is the practice of claiming to have moral standards or beliefs to which one's own behavior does not conform. The Bible says to not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. To be meek means to be quiet and gentle and easily imposed on submissive, humbly patient. Bitter means angry, hurt, or resentful because of one's bad experiences or a sense of unjust treatment. Envy means desire to have a quality, possession, or other desirable attribute belonging to someone else. And strife means angry or bitter disagreement, conflict, now, verse 15 talks about wisdom that, that comes, that doesn't come from above. It's important, the word of God says in Romans chapter 8, verses 6 through 8, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is an amenity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. The definition of carnal is relating to physical, especially sexual needs and activities. Sensual means relating to or involving gratification 
of the senses and physical, especially sexual pleasure. Then condemnation means the expression of very strong disapproval. The Bible says to have the mind of Christ. Have the mind of Christ. The introduction talks about we know that true faith is always accompanied by good works. That's why the word says, be ye doers of his word and not just hearers only. Two types of wisdom. According to James, there is a false wisdom that stems from bitter jealousy and self-interest. In fact, these are demonic impulses because they run counter to the values imparted by the gospel. Jealousy and bitterness suggest discontentment, which runs counter to the message throughout the scriptures that in Christ we have all that we need. Self-interest and a mind constantly curved in on itself suggests a self-absorption that does not readily lead to the love of God and love of neighbor. The two great commandments. According to James, it is these impulses that undergird all types of sin. Alternatively, we are to be peacemakers, sowing seeds of purity, peace, and gentleness by showing mercy because Christ has been merciful to us impartiality because Christ's grace was extended to us without bias and sincerity because of the full commitment that Christ exhibited on the cross. We exhibit the wisdom from above. Reviewing verse 13. The would-be teachers, James was directing the would-be teachers earlier. James is inquiring whether or not they have the wisdom to match their claim, to be practical teachers. Note his question asking for someone both wise and understanding, an expert. If such persons are present, James challenges them to show it by their conversation, their conduct, walk in excellent manner of life. Such people would especially show meekness or a gentle manner. Mere intellectual acumen does not make a great teacher. Behavior is a great contributor. Now reviewing verses 14 and 15. James now, James now sets forth two possible paths for the way forward, a negative and a positive. The first is a path to shun. Envy by itself is not necessarily negative. Bitter envy can best be characterized as jealousy, which will lead to strife. Let's look at Galatians chapter 5. We're going to look at verses 5, 15 through 26. It says, But if ye bite and devour one another, Take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. 
let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another and envying one another. All who call themselves Christians, who display such attitudes, where they are superior, where they appear uh, speak as if they're superior to one another, to another person, are misre misrepresenting Jesus. Verse 15 informs us that this kind of wisdom, that which allows talk that is inconsistent with the life, doesn't have its roots in the divine realm. Such wisdom, he says, is earthly. It's, that means it, gets its, it begins in earth and would thus be subject to earthly limitations and sensual, meaning it belongs to the material rather than the spiritual life stimulating only the body. Finally, he says, it's devilish, demonic, or demon-like. The Bible talks about love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Christians need to saturate their environment with prayer and the word. They need to cast down the world's wisdom so Christ can enter and God's wisdom can take residence. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses three through seven, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. James says those who possess heavenly wisdom will be pure. This means it is devoid of ulterior motives and self-interest. The next characteristic is peaceable. The root word is peace which implies that this wisdom or its owner promotes peace. Contrary to popular belief, peace is not necessarily the absence of strife. The Bible says that God will keep you in perfect peace when your mind is stayed on him. James further lists the characteristics, gentleness, charitable giving, mercifulness, fruitfulness in the faith, fairness, and sincerity. These are wonderful traits to possess and practice for eternity, preparation, and kingdom building. Those who follow us want us to be genuine and sincere. Now we are called to endure. Endure. What is that? What is the word about what does the word say about enduring? The Bible says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. The word of God also says, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Now verse seven of chapter five, it says, Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandmen waited for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it, until he received the early and latter rain. Now this verse, James is saying, he's talking to the selfish rich 
about the judgment. What judgment brings to him to address the saints? Now, his talk to the selfish rich about the judgment brings him to address the saints who are oppressed. The Bible says to charge those that are rich in this world to not be high-minded. To not be high-minded. But nor the charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Now this reminds me of Luke chapter 16 verses 19 through 31 and that's the rich man and Lazarus. The word says there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime, receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that will come thence. The Bible says, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. And if you've done it unto the least, the least of his brethren, the least, God says, you've done it unto me. So feed the hungry, clothe the naked. God cares about you and he cares about people. Now, Let's look at the 10th verse. It says, Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering and of patience. The Bible talks about James 1 and 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. The Bible also says, if you suffer with Jesus, you will reign with him. Does that make sense? Now there are three, four questions. James says seeds of peace sprout into what plant? Question two, when has envy and covetousness blinded you in your love for your neighbor? Question three, what actions lead to judgment and condemnation? Look at James chapter five, verses nine and 12. Question four, relate a time when the Lord alleviated your suffering, whether through a friend or other means. The Bible says to be still and know that he is God. He is God. He gets the glory out of all the suffering, all the suffering. 
The Bible says, do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine, ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. The Bible says to not be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. The Bible says also, Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing, as unto a faithful creator. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path father thank you for giving us wisdom in following you please help us to choose your wisdom and avoid the temptation to follow the wisdom of the world in addition to wisdom please help us to be a patient people to rely on you during times of intense trial and tribulation. In all, help us to be a people known by our wisdom, patience, and full reliance on you. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.